In this session, I will be discussing the topic three, um, D, to uh, part D. Uh, sorry, didn't write D there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be discussing bonding and structure again, but metallic bonding. So it's the last little bit of topic three, and it's going to be a shorter one. Um, so I'm be, I'll be discussing the syllabus points 3.20 to 3.22. So let's start right away. So this is metallic bonding and I'm going to be defining it, obviously. Um, so we've been to, through covalent bonding, ionic bonding, and now we're on to metallic bonding. So we probably already know what the bonding bit stands for, right? It's a strong electrostatic attraction between, now the metallic bit is going to be the regularly arranged giant lattice of cations and delocalized electrons. So we'll um, you must memorize this definition first of all, and we'll see how it looks like. So this is the illustration of how a metallic structure um, is arranged. So we have the regularly arranged um, cations in a lattice, and we have the sea of delocalized electrons, right? So yeah, if you're asked to draw the structure, uh, make sure you draw at least around three rows and three columns so that it can show that it's a lattice. And don't forget the charges, okay? The cations are positively charged and the electrons have to be negatively charged, okay? Um, so we have to be discussing the properties of metals. So first of all, I want to discuss the electrical conductivity. So unlike ions, the, uh, the charge carriers are electrons over here, not like um, molten ionic compounds or aqueous ionic compounds, which the charge carriers would be ions, right? Yeah, so in electrical conductivity, the so metals are good electrical conductors due to the delocalized electrons being able to move within the solid structure, right? Um, as you go across the period three, um, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, those are the metal metallic um, bit, group one, group two, group three. So the number of delocalized electrons per cation is increasing, right? Because the cations are going to be Na+, plus, um, Mg2+, plus, and Al3+, plus. Oh, three plus. So, um, meaning that there's going to be more charge carriers per cation produced. So therefore, the electro electrical conductivity increases. So um, charge carriers increase and electrical conductivity increases, okay? Um, and onto the next property, which is the melting point. So metals have a very, very high melting point due to the large amount of energy required to break the strong electrostatic attraction between cations and electrons. So the important bit is strong. Um, the metallic bonding, it's in the definition, right? Um, the bonding bit is a strong electrostatic attraction. So it's going to be very difficult to break that lattice up. Um, as you go across the period three, um, sodium, magnesium, and aluminum, the charge of the cation increases, right? Na+, plus, Mg2+, plus, and Al3+. Plus. And the number of delocalized electrons per cation will be increasing. So the electrostatic attraction between the um, cations with higher charges as you go across the period, and the increased number of electrons um, delocalized per cation becomes uh, stronger. So the attraction gets stronger. So therefore the melting point is going to increase because it requires more energy to break up the lattice, the attraction between the cations and the electrons, right? Um, and so we are going to be comparing some metals with the same cationic charges because um, before over here we had seen Na+, plus, Mg2+, plus, and Al3+, plus, which have different charges, right? So they actually have um, the same charge. Magnesium has a two plus charge. Barium also has a two plus charge, but the ionic radius of Mg2 plus is a lot smaller than barium two plus. Um, magnesium two plus therefore has a higher charge density, right, than barium because barium is a lot larger. Um, therefore, the attraction between Mg2 plus, magnesium two plus cations and delocalized electrons are going to be stronger. Um, therefore, magnesium has a higher melting point than barium. As you can see in the diagram, the magnesium bit is a lot more compact, isn't it, than barium. So yeah, so uh, the magnesium is going to, be, are going to have a 
um, higher melting point. And the next property that I will discuss is thermal conductivity. So um, not only do they um, they have a high um, they have a high melting point, but they also have a very good and also um, high electrical conductivity. Uh, they have a good they are a good thermal conductor. Um, so we have delocalized electrons that can pass on kinetic energy onto each other when they move around and collide. So when, as they collide, they're going to pass on electron, uh, not, not electrons, pass on energy onto each other. And as cations are closely packed, they're almost like sticking together, they're going to be passing on kinetic energy onto each other directly through vibrations, okay? So electrons can move around, um, and they can collide and pass on kinetic energy. However, cations, they can't move, but they can vibrate and they're, because they're so closely packed together, they pass on energy to each other. And therefore, metals are good thermal conductors, okay? Um, yeah, and the last property that I, want, that I want to discuss is malleability and ductility. So, uh, metals are malleable as layers of cations can slide over each other. Um, so as we have seen the little diagram, so this layer, this layer can be sliding this way um, on top of this layer. So this layer relative to the top layer is going to be going that way, right? Yeah, so they can slide over each other slide over each other that's quite important that's why metals are malleable so it can and uh, by the way malleable means that it can the metals can bend and change shape basically so we can shape metals into different shapes and ductile is basically a special form of malleability where you can draw the metal into a wire so a wi wire would be like a very very thin um, string of metal so it can be used for like structure, um, basically construction, or it can we can make basically um, cables, electrical cables, right? Because they're good conductors of electricity and they can be drawn into a wire. So yeah, that is it for this session. Um, it's a shorter session. I hope you, I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next session.